besides freezing, we are going to film episode one of Ask North 40 today. We got questions from you guys. Uh, we're going to answer why you should feed your horses flaxseed, why you should wear sock liners or shouldn't with your socks, and we're going to try and explain how you can grow more vegetables in this frozen tundra. So, nice. Let's get started. Share your questions with us. We'll share the answers with everybody. This is Ask North 40. All right, getting ready to go to the store. We've got a question on when to feed your horse flax. Uh, Echo is the expert on this, so she's going to give us a rundown on it. Let's head down to the store and check it out. Sam asks, why is it a good idea to supplement your horse with flaxseed? The only source of natural source of omega threes for a horse is through grass, and a lot of times the grass up here is lacking in omega threes. So flax is probably the safest supplement you can add to a horse's diet. It's also the safest fat. Um, it's non irritating and soothing to their stomach. So it's an excellent and probably the safest source you can give to a horse for added weight gain. So North Central gardening question: first expert can't do it. Oh, do we have like a different local expert that we can? Get a hold of real quick. Last spring we had the uh, Amy Grissack. She's a local contributor to the Great Falls Tribune. She's an expert. She can yep, do it. Let's call her. Okay. All right. So we're going to call Amy instead and get you the answer on what vegetables you can grow in North Central Montana. Good morning. Hi, Hi. Amy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Yourself? Kirsten asks, what are some vegetables that are good to grow in North Central Montana other than tomatoes? Well, you can grow just about any vegetable that you can throughout the country. It might be smaller, but there's definitely an easier way to go about looking at vegetables in North Central Montana. And one is working with our weather. So we have those cooler nights, which is why tomatoes don't like it and sometimes squash don't like it as much, but other plants do. So in the springtime, start looking towards those cooler season crops like the lettuce and spinach and radishes. And other things that do great are potatoes. We are a potato growing machine in Montana. And onions, and you can grow absolutely massive onions around here. And then once the soil warms up and you're seeding vegetables and things like that, beans are fabulous. I mean, I have harvested 30 pounds of beans in an area that was maybe 4 by 10, 4 by 12. I mean, they're just huge. And pole beans, so any type of bean you want to grow, we are just a great place to grow those. Peas are fantastic, some of the best tasting peas you'll ever have. And then also cool season crops like those brassicas. So broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, massive, you can grow massive cabbage around here. Kohlrabi, if you like kohlrabi, this is the place to be. And then in the hot of the summer, tomatoes, yes you can. Squash, they can be picky. Some years they're great. Cucumbers do really well for us though. And so do peppers if you pick the right variety. So there is a tremendous amount you can grow in North Central Montana. Takes a little bit of preparation and knowing what variety to plant. But if you do a little homework, you're, you're gonna have a great garden. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And if we, uh, if, if users want to uh, read more of your stuff or get more information from you, uh, mostly in the Gazette or, is there, or, or the Tribune, is there other places for them to uh, read up on what you talk about? In the Tribune, I'm frequent in there. And then also working on reboosting my website, amygreesack.com. Awesome, Amy. All right, Amy. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, for the next question, we're going to answer if... Sock liners. Sock liners. Yes. We're going to answer when you should and possibly shouldn't wear sock liners. So we're going to call Luke over Wigwam and get the answer. Shouldn't point because now I feel like Drew. Insert finger point. Will asks, when should I wear a sock liner? 
So this is Luke from Wigwam, and we thought we would run our sock liner questions by Luke. So Luke, uh, when should you use sock liners? Well, uh, typically when you want to use a sock liner is when you have on a sock that isn't necessarily moisture wicking or moisture repelling. Um, so there are certain types of fibers that are hydrophobic and certain types of fibers that are hydrophilic. Hydrophobic and hydrophilic, it's two words, three parts. Hydro means water, and we got philic and phobic. Philic means love, phobic means fear. So hydrophilic means a love of water, means this material is going to absorb water. Hydrophobic means a fear of water, means it's, it's going to wick water. Um, a liner will typically be something that's made of a hydrophobic fiber like polyester, polypropylene. Uh, the intent with using a sock and liner is to have that moisture wicking layer right next to your foot so that when you're active hiking, hunting, whatever you're doing out in the, out in the wild, um, the moisture that you're creating, the perspiration is being wicked away from your foot, uh, which helps to prevent blisters and also helps keep your feet dry so they'll stay warmer. Um, typically wool is something that's going to be hydrophilic. It's actually going to absorb moisture. So with your heavier boot socks, um, it is sometimes good to wear a liner for that purpose. Um, outside of that, another reason that people sometimes say they use a liner is if they have, let's say, more sensitive feet and they think that's something that's wool maybe irritates them a bit, uh, a liner is kind of a nice barrier in between that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, the concept of layering um, it does a better job of actually trapping, trapping heat and keeping your foot warmer. So kind of a few different things, but the main one is just moisture management. Uh, thank you for taking the time, Luke. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Not a problem. So that does it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave more questions for next week in the comments below or using any of your favorite social media platforms using the hashtag AskNorth40. Thanks. Yeah.